Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I made a video earlier today discussing HIIT cardio a bit, and I discussed actually that endurance work is more useful for general fitness and HIIT, particularly for people who are already lifting weights. It's a whole other topic. You guys can check that video out in the same playlist. Uh, but a subscriber asked a question, and he basically said, Hey Jason, and I'll, I'll link it here for you guys, but in short, he's saying, look, if you're going to do endurance work or train for a marathon, then you have to just accept you're not going to have a strong muscular body. You can't like worship two masters, you know, kind of that whole thing of being a uh, jack of all trades and master of none is the expression. And uh, he's saying, look, you, if you want to run marathons, you got to give up on your dream of having a really muscular, powerful body. And uh, that's really funny. That's hilarious because it's like uh, people aren't keeping up with the current trends in sports and in coaching and in exercise science when they say things like that. Look, we used to believe that was the case. All right. We used to believe that was the case. I used to believe that was the case. But I wasn't aware there was evidence mounting in athletes and coaches and experts who were doing the exact opposite. And I changed my stance a couple years back on that. Uh, you look at guys like Alex Viata, Greg Knuckles. These guys are talking about this stuff uh, quite a bit. Alex Viata was doing his doctoral work on hybrid athletes. Uh, now he's a coach, wrote a book, The Hybrid Athlete. He runs super marathons. Right, runs super marathons. That means more than 20 miles. He does uh, triathlete events, and he's very successful at both. And he is also both a raw and equipped power lifter. The guy deadlifts 700 pounds. And I've seen him do it on video. Deadlifts 700 pounds, weighs like 220 to 230 with visible abs. He's very lean, 10% uh, or lower body fat in that range usually, while weighing over 220. And he can still run 30 miles successfully <laughs> without having to stop. Now stop and think about that. What does that tell you about this idea? It should tell you that there's something wrong with this idea. They don't have it right. And this guy is, again, a brilliant uh, exercise scientist himself. And he's saying, no, it doesn't work that way. Uh, Greg Knuckles actually put out quite a bit of stuff on that. On I mean, what's, is this blog Science and Strength or is it Strength Theory now? I know he's changed it a little bit, but he's talked about it. Again, a very, very successful strength coach, also working on his PhD right now. Uh, you're talking about guys who are in the trenches working with athletes. These guys are in the trenches as coaches with advanced degrees. So we're not talking about just uh, bookworms here. We're talking about guys who are in there working with the athletes and training real athletes. And they're saying the opposite of this now. Uh, Greg Knuckles is the first one to point that out a while back. And he wrote in his blog about it that, look, what seems to happen with people he's worked with and when he did it himself. And now keep in mind, he's a big guy. He's not lean. He eats a lot, yet he still does endurance work. It just uh, He still just eats enough calories to not get lean, so it doesn't matter. But he pointed out that when he started adding very large volumes of endurance work, he noticed that initially his strength goes down. And eventually the strength goes up higher than where he started. And this is someone who's been lifting at an advanced level for quite a few years. We're talking about a 700 plus pound squatter who's saying, yeah, my squat went down eventually, but by the end of the year, I actually gained strength on my squat. And here's what it has to do with. The thing that he noticed is that you're doing all the endurance work, initially it taxes your system because you're already an advanced lifter, you're strong, your body has to readapt a little bit to all this training. But once you start getting used to the endurance work, your recovery systems improve, all right? Your capillarization improves, your work capacity improves, and what happens when all of that happens? Your recovery speeds up. If you're recovering faster, not slower, and that's what the endurance work does over time, it increases your body's ability to recover from various forms of exercise. Even if you're doing hours and hours of cardio a week, as long as it is not pushing yourself to the limits where you're exhausted from it, and you gradually build that capacity, it improves your overall work capacity and recovery. Well, if you're recovering faster every time that you squat because of better capillarization, uh, better waste product clearing, uh, better nutrient flow, blood flow to the muscles. If you're getting a slightly boosted recovery, how in the world is that going to hurt your muscle gains? It's not. The reason, the only reason a lot of marathon runners stay really skinny, they don't eat enough food. Your body weight is determined almost exclusively by your calories in versus calories out, not the form of exercise you do. These guys do large amounts of endurance work and they eat like birds and maybe only eat for events. If you eat enough year round, you could put on weight month after month after month while running 10, 20, 25 miles every single week. 
not a problem. You just have to eat more. So that's what it comes down to. Guys who just don't want to eat enough food might have trouble with it. But people who eat enough food, they're going to gain that extra recovery ability. Well, if you're improving your recovery ability, you're going to get bigger and stronger, aren't you? I mean, is that not a known fact? Does anyone disagree with that fact? Um, if anyone disagrees with it, let me know. Because to my knowledge, if you improve recovery and that allows you to train harder or recover faster from your training as long as you're getting sufficient rest and nutrition a muscle is going to grow and the improved recovery will help it grow slightly faster again anyone care to argue with that point well if the list cardio large amounts of endurance work improves recovery capacity over time that makes it a valuable tool for gaining muscle and strength it doesn't keep you small, it just burns through a lot of calories and for people who can't eat enough it might keep them small. But for people with big appetites, it is fantastic. You can get bigger as a result of it. And on top of it, not only are you getting bigger uh, because you're improving your work capacity and recovery, you get to eat more food. You also improve your heart health. You're improving your cardiovascular capacity by doing it. I mean, anyone who can get up and run 10 miles or 15 miles or 20 miles is definitely going to have a strong cardiovascular system. They're improving their heart health. Well, if you're improving your heart health, your overall quality of life and your lifespan is going to improve. Heart disease is the number one killer in the United States and becoming more so in the rest of the Western world due to our diets. Well, the ability to do all of this cardio, large volumes of list cardio that doesn't hurt your recovery, it speeds up your recovery, is helping your gains and it's helping keep you alive longer. So with all these guys doing it, when I see guys who squat 700 pounds, I see guys who deadlift 700 pounds, who can uh, do hours and hours and hours and hours of cardio and who can run super marathons still and someone tries to say that oh if you train for a marathon you have to give up that dream or if you want to do lots of cardio it's going to kill your gains uh, i'm sorry but there's your real world evidence that it's not true not only that the guys who are promoting it everyone i see promoting this idea out there is an actual physiologist. These are actually people who are real legitimate experts, not just coaches, but they have scientific credentials and uh, educational credentials to go with their coaching experience. So all these guys I see out there right now who are promoting this have both the real world experience and the formal education in the lab. And they're saying, no, the endurance work can make you a better strength athlete. It can help you get bigger and stronger faster if you use it correctly yeah you can be a marathon runner and a power lifter now is there a downside to it yeah it requires a lot more calories for a 220 or a 230 pound man to run a marathon but you know what uh, that's where other dietary approaches come in yeah you could argue that well the, their muscles only hold so much glycogen so they can't fully carb load enough to do the event well not necessarily true because there's something else going on there one their muscles can also hold more glycogen than a smaller person because they have massive storage factors, transient storage factors and glycogen storage and glycogen disposal available to them. But number two, these are big eaters. Usually with sometimes stressed GI tracts from all the food they eat, they can also eat a bunch of fat with it. They don't have to just carb load, they could also fat load, which is tremendously more calorically dense than uh, carbohydrates. And what do you burn really, really easily when doing slow endurance work? Fat. Your body's preferred fuel source in that environment will be fat if it has it available. It's very good at burning fat in that environment. Unlike some others where you can only burn uh, glucose or sugar, you can burn almost pure fat while doing that type of uh, training or competitive event. So they can just fat load not just carb load and uh, get away with it just fine. But yeah, they will have to consume more calories. They might have to consume twice as many calories uh, for the event or for a run of that distance as someone who's skinny and lighter like you think of as a traditional marathon runner. But so what? Think of the epic pizza binge they get to have the night before they do an event. You know, you can't beat that. And that is does come down to it. In fact, I know Alex had said, even though he is really, really lean, like people say you can't out-train a bad diet, the guys who actually do this sort of stuff prove that you can't out-train a bad diet. Because Alex stays really lean, and I remember at one time saying, because he does so much training between his powerlifting training, which is four days a week, plus all his marathon training, 
that he was having to uh, drink beer and eat crispy cream but donuts before bed every night just to get the extra empty calories to even maintain his body weight because he didn't have a whole lot of body fat left he's relatively lean uh, so you know this is someone who <laughs> burns so many calories doing their stuff as an athlete that they have to drink beer and eat donuts just to maintain that's not a bad life and I know a lot of fitness oriented people don't want to hear that will be like that's awful but there's some truth to that if you're so physically active you're so physically active that you need just empty excess junk calories just to maintain your body weight and maintain your muscle mass because you're burning through it. Actually, junk calories like that don't have the same negative health effects as you think they do. Uh, it's usually when you're gaining body fat as, the, as a result of eating them and they really, really make your blood work look terrible. But people who are training very intensely and training multiple energy systems like that, no, those junk calories don't hit them the same way. They're not nearly as unhealthy for them as they are a sedentary person. They're, they're not even in the same ballpark. So uh, another big perk of it, you get to eat a lot more food if you do that. And some of these guys, it's not just get to, they have to. They don't have a choice. But this idea that, you know, you can't do large amounts of endurance work because it will hurt your gains is a very antiquated and outdated idea and the guys who still think that way really need to get with the times they need to see what's really going on in exercise science and they need to see what's really going on with real athletes out in the trenches because both of those things are now showing that that's just simply not true that's not the case any longer that is an antiquated outdated line of thinking and I, i've promoted before in the past where that line of thinking came from how they came about doing it and it seemed to be valid but once people started really putting effort into doing the opposite, studying the opposite, having athletes do the opposite, we found out that that line of thinking wasn't true. It was an unproven hypothesis. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.